Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Sanjian, and today is the long-awaited 2024, aka Season 14, Zoe matchup guide. I will be spending one to two minutes on each champion, and I'll be showcasing what runes to go and how to play the matchup. I'm just going to go in alphabetical order, go as fast as I can, and I'm doing this all in one take, so if I sound fucking stupid, I'm sorry. Also, if you guys don't know who I am, um, I'm a multi-season challenger player. Um, I'm known to be one of the best Zoe's in the world, and also I do do coaching, so if any of you want to get Zoe coaching, um, join my Discord below, then DM me there. And now let's get started. Okay, starting off with Ari. Um, the Ari matchup is a little either, it can go two ways. It can go, depending on what her runes are, depending on what your runes are, can actually make or break this matchup pretty bad. Um, I think this is what we're just going to go in Season 10, I mean, Season 14 for Ari. We're just going to go Ari, Metal Flipman, Transcendent Scorch, with Taste of Blood, and Ingenious Hunter. Um, Ingenious Hunter, by the way, is you're going to want to run Ingenious Hunter on every rune page you do in Season 14. reason why is because all the items are actives, or they're passives that, like, they're, like they, they proc. So Ingenious Hunter is super important for that. And in the Ari matchup, all you do is just do short-range cues, you hedge a bit. So... You want to go Taste of Blood and Scorch so you can have a little bit of an edge um, in your trading patterns. Also, make sure in this matchup you prioritize either going Mercs or um, you can just sit on a Verdant Barrier and go from there. Um, but I definitely would actually just go Mercs in this matchup. So that's what I would do for Ari. Now, moving on to Akali. Now, this matchup got a lot harder because... Uh, Kali doesn't have to go Proto Bell anymore. She can just go straight up whatever she wants. Um, and it opens a lot of Mythics for Akali. So, honestly, I think this the same rune page as the Ari one is also perfectly fine. Um, but I do, do, do think in this matchup, you're going to have to prioritize going um, Banshee's Veil second. So, the Ingenious Hunter obviously can help you a lot there. Tax Rune, Magic Resist, obviously good. Um, into Akali, you never want to ult. Like, you can ult forwards. Make sure you always utilize short-range cues and hedges. Um, if you ult forwards against Akali, she'll always either R on top of you than E, or if she's smart, when you R forward, she'll pull her E. I mean, she'll use her E, and then she'll go to you and kill you. Also, never use bubble unless she's Eing or Ring you. That's it. If you waste bubble in this matchup, you will die 100% of the time. You will die. So, be careful of that. And these are runes out go, and yeah. Okay, that one was really easy. Next one is Akshan. So Akshan is a pretty tricky matchup. Um, against Akshan, I will do these rune pages right here. Um, where is this? So, okay. So against Akshan, I'll do Electric, Taste of Blood, Idol Collection, Ingenious Hunter, Nimbus Cloak, and Celerity. And I would go the summoner spell Heal. The reason why you need heal into Akshan or barrier, heal or barrier, is because you need movement speed to run away um, against Akshan. You pretty much never, ever, ever beat him in a 1v1, like literally ever. And the only way you can beat him is if you like look for bursts. So Electrocutes is really good. Like just let's say he E's in, he fuck up, and like you land a bubble, you get Electro proc, you dip out. So that's how you play the Akshan matchup. Also, maybe sitting in an arm guard could be okay, but it's more expensive this season, so I don't really know. But um, yeah, for the actual matchup, these are the rune page that I will definitely do. And um, you gotta make sure you really gotta make sure what spell he takes level one. If he takes E level one, you're fucked. If he takes Q level one, you're fine. If he takes E level one, girl, start fucking praying, cause <laughs> you're us gonna lose that trade. Okay, that's why we take heal, so we can run away and be like, Ooh, super scary. Okay, next champion. Ooh, the next champ for sure. No, for sure, the next champion on this list for sure. The next champion is Anivia. If you play this champion, you are a... Anyways, um, if you play... I mean, sorry. If you're versing Anivia, there's either two pages you can go. You can do uh, this rune page right here. B -b 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 Where are you? With... Um, yeah. So you can either do this rune page. Oh, with... Or you can do... Uh, this rune page. Where are you? And then go... 
you can either do the first room page I just showed you, or you can do this room page. So the reason behind those two room pages is because Spellbook, you want to go TP against Nivea, and you want to be able to um, like mash your wave clear. So Nivea, the whoever designed Nivea needs to be fired and Graves queued. But her the ch the champ is just like designed to stall out the game. And also, if you ever ult forwards against Nivea, she'll just kill you. She'll wall you. If you burn flash against Nivea, it's really bad. Also, in this matchup, I actually recommend going Ignite Ghost. Low key, it's pretty good. Popularized by Smeekin, but Ignite Ghost in this matchup is pretty good. But if you go Spellbook, if you go Spellbook, just go Ignite Ghost. Like it's fine. It's actually pretty good. Or you can go TP Ghost. Honestly, it's chill. But uh, yeah, that's how to play the Nivea matchup. Make sure you just stay safe and you try your best. Ask for a gank, and if not, uh, FF15, and the champ is cringe. Okay, next champ is Annie. Okay, there's a couple of rune pages to go into against Annie. Um, you can go this page here. Also, if you're versing Annie, I cannot stress this enough. Do not greed. Do not greed going sorcerer shoes. You will die. You will die. Don't go sorcerer shoes into Anivia. I mean, into Annie. You will die. 100% of the time, you will die. Um, the champion is designed to one-shot you, even if she's behind. Plus, next season, Annie is actually going to... You're going to be seeing a lot of Annie because Malignance is super strong. So, against Annie, I'd probably take this rune page here. The reason why I'm going Nimbus Cloak is to try to kite her out. Um, Transcendence is also just good in general. Also, you can do this rune page here with uh, Mantle Flip and uh, Transcendence, but you need to rush Mercs into Verdant Barrier and then ca uh, Caster's Companion, I mean, Luden's Companion, or you can just go Mercs Loon's Companion, and then um, that. I do not recommend going the Proto Belt build against Annie. You will die over and over again. She will be 0 50 and still kill you. <clears throat> also, make sure you're never ulting. If you ult forwards into Annie while her sun's up, you're going to die. You're going to die. So, yeah. On to the next one. Is Aesol. Okay, so Aesol's a pretty bedge lane, um, which means like it's pretty just, you're just farming. Um, against Aesol... I recommend doing this rune page here. You're not fighting Aesol. I mean, you can play for fighting, but if you don't take this rune page, you're going to get outscaled. Like, you're just flat out going to get outscaled. Um, make sure when you play against Aesol, do not waste your bubble early. If you, Let's say you go for a trade. You you ult forward, you, ult, you bubble, it misses. He can just fly on you and Q you and kill you. Like, just straight up kill you. Burn your flash or burn your sums. So in this matchup, only look for bubbles while he's sitting still. Don't look for it when he's moving, okay? That part. Or when he's flying. Only save your bubble for when he's flying or standing still. Also, you can use your R to dodge his ult. You can also jump over Aesol R. People don't know that, but you can jump over Aesol ult in that. And also your sums are just the standard ignite and flash. Or you can go TP as well, but it just depends on what like your preferences are at the end of the day. So that's the Aesol matchup. Okay. Next is the golden chicken, Ajir. Okay, so Azir used to be really hard, but there's actually a rune page that makes Azir really bad, and it's this page right here. Now, you're like, Ben, what the fuck? Why am I taking this rune page? Why am I going Resolve Annie? I'm mean, against Azir, Azoe. The reason why is because Azir right now, his most popular build is Hail of Blades, and if you go Bone Plating, he just goes pew, 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 and it does like zero damage. So your trading pattern is really good. Plus, if you have Scorch and Airy, you're always going to out-trade him. Because Azir doesn't go um, the green tree second. So you always will be able to beat Azir. Um, another, things to key, another points to go is when Azir ults you, you can actually buffer your R. So when you get pushed back, you come back. So save your ult for when he uh, ults you. And also, don't look to waste for your ease. I mean, you can fish for ease, but I would fish for ease like through the wall, but not really like into him like that. So yeah, this is rune page to do. Standard runes, ignite and flash. On to the next one. Brand. Okay, this isn't the only reason why I put brand here is because malignance is gonna be really strong. Also, brand jungle is really popular right now. And just people are playing a lot of Brand. Um, against Brand, I definitely do think it is a Q play style of Zoe, but we're going to have to go in Genius Hunter as well. Also, you have to go Mercs into Brand. You're going to die. Like, 
Annie and Brand, their champs are just so squashed with damage that you have to respect their damage or you lose. Um, into Brand, if you ult forwards, he can just E and then Q you. He can E you while you ult forwards and then Q to where your location was where you just were. So you have to be careful of that. Um, other things you need to note is that Brand, just as a champ, has one of the highest base damages in the game, especially in team fighting. So make sure you're looking for um, ults over walls and like ults over that so you're not clumped up with your team. So that's pretty much what I would do. Also, go, go Mercury Treads. Don't greed, go Mercs. Even though I'd fucking low key greed and go Sorry for shooting, but <clears throat> go Mercs. <laughs> okay, next, Cassiopeia. Now, Cassiopeia is a little strange because there's a couple play styles of what you can go into Cass, but the Cassiopeia matchup used to be really tricky because um, the items she built this season, I haven't really played against Cassiopeia that much, but I do know that the items that she prioritizes is very high in HP. So, with that in mind, um, I'd go Mana Flow Band, I mean, Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendent, Scorch, obviously, and then here's the catch. We're gonna go Presence of Mind or Triumph. <clears throat> presence of Mind or Triumph with Cut Down. Cassiopeia in the new season, all the items Cassiopeia builds is all HP. So you're always getting value out of Cut Down the entire game. It's the same thing for Swain. But Cassiopeia, all of her items this season are heavy, heavy, heavy HP items. So you will always be getting value out of Cut Down. Um, also, you could just go cut down and this rune, right? I mean, uh, you could go cut down with uh, Tenacity if you're a little bit scared of her ultimate, but it's honestly fine. Also, when you're versing Cassiopeia, if you ever ult forwards against her, she can just R you and then Miasma you. You're dead. So <clears throat> please, please, please be careful of that. It's really scary. And Cassiopeia, don't try... Like, you can look for little cute little trades early. Make sure you realize what spell she starts level 1. If she starts Q level 1, you're... You're fine. She starts E level one. She's gonna touch you inappropriately, so be fucking careful of that. And play around um, vision as well. Make sure you put the ward in the middle of the lane against Cassiopeia as well. Okay, next is Cho'Gath. Now, I was even debating putting Cho'Gath on this list, but Cho'Gath is going to be so strong next season because because of. The tank items. The tank items are going to be extremely, extremely, extremely gross. So, what you will be doing is you will be going first strike, this, this, and this. Okay? We're going to go presence of mind with cut down. We'll be going presence of mind with cut down, okay? And we'll be prioritizing as much AP as we can. So, the reason why we're doing this. Also, you can go um, Leandries in this matchup, but it doesn't give mana anymore. I'd probably get it later. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because we can farm first strike gold, and once we get Shadow Flame um, into Cho'Gath, your true damage crits, and also first strike damage crits. So you crit on the gold you gain, which is really good into tanks. So if you're playing against a tank, first strike is definitely going to be the way to go. Also, Dark Harvest can work as well. Um, because Dark Harvest crits uh, with that as well, but I definitely think these are the runes to go. Also, don't waste your mana early game harassing him. You only want to harass him when your first strike is up. And then, um, yeah, only want to harass him when his first strike is up, when your first strike is up. And then look for long range cues and bubbles. Also, if it goes past 30 minutes and you're versing a Cho'Gath, surrender. So, yeah, that's how I would play the Cho'Gath matchup. Okay, now on to Quirky. Now, this champ, this champ is so bubblegum, dumb, dumb, fucking horrible, but I do think there might be a world where Quirky might be really good again with the new item Malignance. Um, so into Quirky, there's not really much to talk about. Just respect his package and like, these are the runes I'd take. You could bully him out early. I mean, you can go Taste of Blood or that. You can bully him out early and like just play for pokes you know but at the end of the day it's like it's really not scary it's quirky the only time quirky is going to be scary is if you're in a tight area around baron dragon <clears throat> or you're just not respecting his roams make sure you're paying your team when the package is up those are like the main 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 things to look out for so this is the room page i would take and yeah okay 
Now on to Diana. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I have a, I've low-key recently been having a mental block against this champion. I think Diana's sleeper, sleeper broken mid lane with phase rush against, like, when Diana takes phase rush, I think it's really toxic to play against. She does a lot of damage, and she's really hard to beat. <clears throat> so, in that sense, I would take Aerie, just the standard hedge page, like this, with Taste of Blood. This is the rune page I would take. I would 100 in a billion percent either rush two items. We're rushing Lich Bane to hedge, and we're rushing Banshees. So it's going to be Ludens, Lich Bane, Banshee. Or you can just sit on Verda Barrier. Diana is just super, super... You need... <clears throat> you need to respect Diana's all-in. It's extremely, extremely high. And also, Diana's, if they're really smart, they'll QR, I mean, they'll QE to a creep, and it'll reset before it procs. So you think, oh, her dash is down. And then she'll E to a creep, and then E to you again. So she actually has three dashes, so you have to look out for that. It's really, really, really important in that matchup. Also, when she dashes on you, um, make sure you just save your bubble for that. And also, you can ult out of her R as well. Okay, now on to... Echo. Um, there's two play styles you can go into Echo. You can play this play, the ex this. You can do this exact rune page here, or you can do <clears throat> a Q play style where it's just like this. You can do this play style against Echo. The reason why you can do this against Echo is because Echo is a burst champ. You want to one shot Echo before he ults. Um, so you want to be prioritizing champ uh, items like. Storm Surge, Shadow Flame, Robodons, Lich Bane. You want to get as much bang for your buck into Echo and just one-shot him before he can actually do anything. Um, lane phase is pretty easy. Also, make sure when you're playing against Echo, when he when he E's you, don't just randomly use your E. Because it, he, there's a frame where he jumps a bit. like it, It's like a teleport. And when he jumps, um, he actually just dodges your bubble. So be very, very, very careful of that. Also... Echo R does not break sleep, so if you put him to sleep, he will be asleep when he's at his de destination. So that is what I would do. Um, and yeah, that's just pretty simple. Pretty simple for there. On to the next one, which is Fizz. Now, unfortunately, you guys know I was a huge fan of Crown into Fizz. Unfortunately, Crown does not exist anymore. Sorry. Um... This will probably be the room page that I will be doing into Fizz now. Um, yeah, I think this will probably be it. Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. So, you're playing against Fizz. You're like, I don't have Crown anymore. Also, Fizz can't go Proto Belt. Or Fizz can't go Leandres either. So, Fizz actually has to itemize mana. I mean, he can't... Like, if he, if he itemizes damage, he is just useless. So if you're versing Fizz, obviously you go Barrier, or you can go uh, Exhaust. Barrier or Exhaust, but preferably Barrier. Um, rush Verdant Barrier. Verdant Barrier gives you Banshees j just for free. For 1,600 gold, Fizz can never kill you. You just rush Verdant Barrier. And if you have a Genius Hunter, it's going to be the same cooldown as Banshee's Veil. So that's like the key thing. Um, key things into Fizz, uh, make sure you hedge early. Make sure you see what spell he takes early game. If he takes E, Playful Trickster, level 1, and you walk up for a hedge, you lose the trade. So be careful. Um, also, obviously, don't make sure you're ulting your forwards against Fizz. He'll fucking ult you and fucking let me out. He'll fucking kill you. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay, moving on to Galio. Now, yet again, um, against Galio, the... Guys, this new tank item is sick, twisted, and demonic. Every ta every single tank is going to be building this item, just so you know. So, either we can go cut down or whatever. So, this is the rune page that we will be doing into Galio. We'll be going Presence of Mind, Cut Down, Gathering Storm, Transcendence, Manifold Ban, Airy. All we do all this, and what we do, and what we do, is we go. I mean, you can go first strike, but against Galio, I'd argue you need more uh, agency in lane, for, either than like a Cho'Gath, because like, yeah, you need more agency in this lane. So that's why I take Aerie. But um, you want to be prioritizing Magic Pen, you want to be prioritizing as much damage as you can 
Void Staff early. Like, this champ is demonic next season. Galio is going to be really, really, really strong. Also, off topic, I'd recommend even picking fucking Gwen into Galio. Just something to contain him. You know what I'm saying? Because he's hard to contain. Um, also, make sure you respect his damage level 3. Galio's damage level 3 is really high. Um, his wave clear is really good. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Oh, also, when he when he's in W, you can just ult to dodge his W. And that's how to play this matchup. Okay, now into Gragas. Um, low key, I just take this same page because Gragas is a HP stacking champ, and since they nerfed CDR, you can just do this exact same page. Um, actually, I'll do the same page without trends uh, without uh, Gathering Storm. I'll just do this page right here. I think this page is perfectly fine into Gragas. You have some lane agency. You have some sustain with a presence of mind. You have some cut down because Gragas can build HP. Um, or he could be a psychopath and not build HP and do some like crazy shit. But against Gragas, just make sure you're saving your R for you buffer his ult for when he tries to boomba you. So when he ults, you press R and then you fly away but come back. Um, make sure you rush boots in this matchup because it's super, super, super important for dodging stuff, for dodging his uh, Q. Because the hitbox and the speed of that, the speed of that is literally higher than my blood pressure and the fucking hitbox of Gragas Q is bigger than I am in real life. And that's big, bitch. So you gotta fucking be careful of that. Um, you could go Banshees in this matchup, but I think you should just build full damage and say, fuck it. You fuck him up. Now on to Hui, a new champ that's on the list that was not on last year's. So, um, I do think the best rune page into Hui is 100% um, Q play style with Proto Belt. Uh, um, yeah, I think Q play style with Proto Belt is definitely going to be the best. With this, this is going to be a Proto Belt rush page. So you got Manifold Ban, Opposite Focus, and Junior Hunter. You just want to rush. Oh. You just want to rush Proto Belt and try one shotting him. You can just you can do the other variant without Proto Belt, where you just go Caster's Companion, or you can just flat out rush Storm Surge in this matchup. You want to one shot that Twink, get that Twink out of there. You want to one shot him. Thanks to note into way when you alt forwards, it makes it so he can hit land his entire kit really, 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 really easily. So please, please be please, please, please be careful. <clears throat> also, Hui does outscale you, so you actually need to be really safe later into the game, because if you get hit by his ult, it's really, really, really hard to dodge anything. Um, but you can bully him early in the game until he gets one or two items, and then he becomes a little bit obnoxious. But I definitely would recommend like going Proto, Shadow Flame, Storm Surge. You can go Banshees. And yeah, that's what I'd recommend in this matchup. Okay. Now on to Heimer. Now, I actually haven't seen any Heimers recently, but I only put him here because I feel like he'd be popular next season. Um, against Heimer, you want to play Q play style. You want to do this exact room page right here. And you want to be rushing... Oh. You want to be rushing Caster's Companion into Storm Surge or just sit in a lost chapter and then go into Storm Surge. And go TP, because you can never kill him. You are aiming to one-shot Heimer and kill him. That is your job. Not to poke him. You're not going to outlane him. You look to one-shot him. Also, make sure when you're playing against Heimer, if he's smart, he'll put a turret right in front of your Q. Or when you ult forwards, he'll put a tower. So what you do, you look for like the lanes. You look for bubbles all like on the side of the walls. And then you also want to Q like to the side. Not like straight on, but like like this. Like, like that. When it... Diagonal. You want to aim your Q diagonally into Heimer. So that's what I would do. Also, uh, you can go Merxus matchup, but that's only if it's like super high elo. So that's, yeah, that's that. Okay, now on to Irelia. So I just played a couple games of Irelia on PvE. <clears throat> she does seem a little stronger because she can prioritize tenacity a lot more. So in this matchup, I would recommend doing this rune page here. Um, where are you? Okay. So, I would recommend doing this rune page here. And you're like, Ben, why the fuck do you have Ghost Poro? 
Um, Because if this is a high elo game, I am never going to kill Irelia properly. I can space her really well, but I'm not going to get any value out of um, Eyebell Collection. So I can just play off of the AP I get from Ghost Poro and end up getting more AP and more advantage with Ghost Poro. So the way it works, just put a <clears throat> lane ward, beginning of the game. Do not get a Ghost Poro thing. Also, don't swap until your Ghost Poro is fully stacked. So make sure that's important. Also, Ingenious Hunter also works on trinkets. So Ghost Poro and Ingenious Hunter have really good synerg uh, synergy together. Also, in this matchup, you want to rush boots. You want to prioritize just heavy damage items. Luden's Companion, Lich Bane, Raba, Shadow Flame. Buy all the fucking AP you can get. <clears throat> also, respect Irelia's level, uh, level 2 all in. And when Irelia cues onto you, she's always going to either be a little bit behind you or her hitbox will be a little behind you. So either wait for the animation to start to cast your E or wait for her to fully Q and then cast your E, or you're gonna miss it. She can she can E through it. So you gotta be careful of that. Um and I think that's about it. Also play around hedges as well. That's obvious. But yeah, play around hedges. Okay, now on to Jace. Um honestly, I haven't really seen that much Jace's. I feel like Jace is gonna be a little lot weaker because he uh, CDR in the game is a lot lower. Um into Jace, you do want to go taste the blood. It's like really imperative. Honestly, this rune page right here against Jace is perfectly fine. Um, you want to play with hedges. You want to make sure that you're not getting hit by a shock blast. Um, you want to be prioritizing short range cues, like I said, hedges. And then when Jace to the skies you, to when he uses his Q, you want to make sure you just save your E. Never, ever, ever look, f unless you can like ult forwards and like fish for an E. But never, ever, 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 you want to just like ult forwards. And then like he could like, to the skies and then EU really quick and then do a full combo and you die. So, yeah. Make sure you're playing around his cooldowns and knowing how much damage Jace does. That's like a main thing of this matchup. Okay, now on to Karma. The only reason why I put Karma on this list is because I think Karma next season, I think Supportive and Tink mid laners are going to be really strong. Um, into Karma, it's the same thing for Heimer. You're playing for scale. You're not playing to kill her. You will not kill her. Um, Karma's lane phase is extremely, extremely obnoxious. You just want to keep your head up high and just be like, yo, I want to kill this bitch. She's annoying as fuck. Let's fucking kill her. <clears throat> because unless she fucks up super hard, she, you will not kill her. Um, Karma has a really, really, really strong all-in level 3 with a jungler, so you have to be careful with that. Also, against Karma, you do want to be looking for backline access, which means... Backline access is like, Karma's a champ that she sits really far behind, and that's why you want to go electrocute. So you want to be focusing super, super, super hard on just bursting as much as you can, even through their shields, just burst as much as you can. So against Karma, I'd go like Storm Surge, Loon's Companion, Robidons, like uh, just f as much gross AP as you can. So yeah. Or you could go Hedge as well. I wouldn't go hedge. Okay. Now on to Kassadin. Now, the Kassadin matchup has evolved a bit. I do think these are probably the best runes into Kass. Where are you? Where, where is this? Yeah, okay, okay. Mm hmm. Okay, I do think these are the best runes into Cassidy, just because if you build properly into Cass, you can actually get a lot of fucking gold out of first strike in early game. <clears throat> this is only if you want to like go even with Cassidy. You can't. There's a different ver variation of this rune page where you go like you go this with this, but this is honestly like you're gonna fall off. And you're just not getting that much value out of Scorch in area because of his passive, but you actually end up gaining a lot more gold if you, <clears throat> if you itemize like this. I mean, if you prioritize your runes like this. Also into Cassadin, you want to keep your wave. You don't want to shove and cast. You want to keep your wave mid so it's unsafe for him to farm. So you just want to freeze. Since they made mid lane bigger, it's actually easier to freeze waves. So you just want to keep your wave 
as close as you can to your tower and make sure Kassadin can't function. If you keep shoving in Kassadin over and over again, he is going to get the experience. It doesn't need the goal. He's just going to keep getting XP, 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 and it's really, really, really unsafe because he'll end up just outscaling you. And I don't. I haven't played against the new Kassadin with the new items, but you could technically go cut down here, but I, I wouldn't do it. Um, <clears throat> you want to be prioritizing like Lichbane and Castor's, I mean Luden's Companion, and yeah, that's what you want to be doing in the Castor matchup. Also, if it's past when he's level 11, good luck, you're going to lose. So, yeah. <laughs> On to Katarina. Um, Katarina, like, controversial take, this champ as Zoe, girl, is so fucking easy to beat Kat. Like, it's really easy to beat Katarina as Zoe. Like, it takes, like, you, Katarina has to fuck up super hard to kill you. These are the rune pages, uh, this is the runes I would take into Kat. <clears throat> um, pretty standard. Honestly, you could just straight up rush fucking Lich Bane against Katarina. She can never kill you. And if Kat, I will say though, I will say, if Kat's going the new tank Katarina, pray to Cthulhu because you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Katarina, you will lose. But hopefully she goes AP. She's really easy to face. All you have to do is prioritize hedging. And also you only want to cast your E when she's already used her shampoo. Um, and make sure you watch out for her daggers when you're training with her. And that's pretty much it. If she goes tank, uh, FF, and shave your head. Okay. Uh, Kale. So I was even debating putting her on this list, but I think she's going to be popular with Terminus. So, low key. No, low key, this rune page is fine. You could go this rune page or the proto belt page without mana, but I do think this page is just going to be overall. What the fuck? I thought someone was coming to my house. Anyways, I thought this rune page was going to be overall like worse, but honestly, I think it's fine. So we're just going to be going send impact here. We're going to be going um, ingenious hunter. And just, we're going to be prioritizing as much damage as we can. Like, we're going to go first item Luden. I mean, first item um, Lich into Shadow Flame. Or, like, first item Lich Bane into Companion. I mean, and, yeah, into Luden's Companion. It just depends. But Kale, you just harass her. Honestly, she doesn't even outscale you. Because, like, unless she's, like, fake or good. Kale is just a really weird champ to play against and I don't think she's that gonna be, she's gonna be that good next season I mean I think she will be I think she'll be more popular than this season mid but since the lane is like small uh bigger and it's easy it's harder for people to gank so yeah <clears throat> that's how to play against Kale Kennen so Kennen is actually gonna be a huge issue um because of the new Malignan's item the item on Kennen is really strong. Also, Kennen is a champ that he can build the new AP items and not have to worry about um, not have to worry about itemizing mana. So he can just build the new AP items for free. Um, against Kennen, I would go honestly. Yeah, I would go this page. I would just go. Oh, I just go standard Zoe page, like standard Q play style Zoe page. We're gonna be going like um fuck what's it called i mean you can't go proto cancel into zoe i'm mean, into him but i'd recommend going like ludens and just trying to one shot him like ludens lich or ludens shadow flame uh by the way just context horizon is a dead item now it's dead item's dead but uh yeah, into Kennen, never ult forwards. If he's smart, he'll just E into you, ult, kill you, and you want to cry. You can prioritize going... Um, actually, I'd probably go Banshees in this matchup. Just because the new Kennen probably is not going to go Proto Belt. So he can't proc it off you. And that's what I would do against Kennen. Okay, let me get my list out. Who's on my list next? Kogma. Okay. Only reason why I put Kogma here is because of Malignance. I think Kogma is going to be really popular yet again. Um, same room page isn't a canon. You can do this page. It's perfectly fine. Against Kogma, all you're going to be doing is farming. Um, it's going to be really obnoxious to play against him later into the game. 
Just because malignance, he permanently procs the item over and over and over and over and over again, and it's really annoying. But um, lane phase, you just it, just respect his E damage. A low key kind of stacks up, and also the lane is bigger, so it is harder to gank him. So you got to respect um, Kogma's damage early game. Once Kogma hits 11, he becomes extremely, extremely, extremely obnoxious to play against. The range is really high, and you just want to look to one shot him and get out as fast as possible. You want to one shot him. Get the fuck out. And that's what we want to be doing. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Two, Kasanti. I think Kasanti is going to be one of the best, like one of the most popular mid laners in the entire game next split. Because, I mean, this year, because like the tank items are just so strong. They're so, 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 so strong. So, against Kasanti, these are the runes that we're going to go. These are the runes that we want to be going. Um, we want to be going cut down. We are going to be going either Ludens. We're going Ludens into Void. Luden Void into Shadow Flame. Luden Void Shadow Flame will be our core, and then probably Leandries after that. Um, the the fact that we can crit on Zoe's true damage is going to be really, really, really strong into tanks. So Shadow Flame actually will be a good item into tanks. Specifically on champions that deal true damage. Um, and the Kasanti matchup, you just want to prioritize using uh, hedges for mana flow band procs. And also, since you have presence of mind, you can just keep harassing him over and over again. Also, make sure you realize that his W does stop your R, I mean, your bubble. Both of his, his ult stops your sleep. And also, if you ult forward in Kasanti, he can actually kidnap you out of his ult. Out of your ult. So you have to be really, really, really safe about that. And yeah, that's what how I would play the Kasanti matchup. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I do. Mm, just don't look, just look to not get ulted. Pretty much that. Oh God, LeBlanc. Okay, so... LeBlanc is a little bit of a weird one. So against LeBlanc, you have if it's an AP LeBlanc, you have to respect her and go MR. Um, you have to rush Mercs into LeBlanc AP LeBlanc. She will kill you. Point blank period. If it's AD LeBlanc, pray to Cthulhu, you will never kill her. <laughs> AD LeBlanc is super annoying. AP LeBlanc is also super annoying, but I'd rather get one shot by the AP LeBlanc than get auto to death by Lux can be deceiving. Like, ugh. I hate that play style. It's so annoying. But into LeBlanc, you want to prioritize Mercury Treads. Also, you want to make sure that you're only casting um, your E when she distortions forwards and make sure you can look to predict it. This matchup is really ping dependent. So make sure you're extremely like careful of how you use your bubbles because it is ping dependent. So if the enemy LeBlanc has lower ping than you, you're probably going to lose because it is a ping dependent matchup. Also, um, if LeBlanc chains you, you can just R out of her range and she like the chain will break. That's a good tip. And make sure you use a bubble cancel to, if she tries tower diving you, you can do a, a bouncy bubble cancel to make it so it covers the entire area of her distortion. So yeah, that's how I'd play the LeBlanc matchup as runes. Okay, next is Lissandra. Liss... Uh, Honestly, I don't think Liss will be that much of an issue. Low key, Lissandra's really bad into tanks. And I don't think Lissandra is going to be picked that much. So if you do versus Lissandra, honestly, you can just play full burst proto. You can go. You could honestly go proto belt without a mana item. Low key. You can just do this page here. And just play to one shotter. Because I think Liss next season is not going to be the greatest. Um, make sure you're prioritizing. Um, like you can look for hedges as well, but in this matchup, I'd get I'd be really a little afraid that if I just ulted forwards, she could just ult me, or um, if I ult forwards and look for a bubble and I miss it, she could e forwards and then kill me if for a gank. So you have to be careful of that. Also, Lissandra's lane phase is a little strong if she goes uh, comet, but if she doesn't, it's pretty bad. So you just have to be careful of that. Also, make sure you just ward early because Lissandra is a, like a a tandem mid laner, so she wants to play with her jungler. So be careful with that. Okay, on to the next one. 
Oh my god, my favorite! Oh my god, my favorite! Lux! Okay! Guys, we're playing against Lux. Now, the rune page for Lux has changed. It has changed. We will be doing this exact rune page right here, honestly. Low key. You can go hedge, Zoe. You can do that page that I just showed you. You can do this page here. But we will be going Mercury Treads into Verdant Barrier Rush. Masha Allah. Masha Allah. The fact that we can go Verdant Barrier into Lux now, oh, it's fucking Christmas. I just came. It's the greatest gift ever. Lux, the, ma the Lux matchup just became so much easier because you can buy Verdant Barrier and just keep it there. And since you go Ingenious Hunter, it's the same cooldown as Banshees. So it's pretty much a 1,000 gold cheaper Banshees. And she can never kill you. Ever kill you. Like, the bitch can never kill you. So, honestly, the Lux matchup has become a lot easier. <coughs> but you do have to keep in the fact that if you do alt forwards as Lux, or any, if you walk forwards as Lux, against Lux, all of her spells are linear, and you do have to walk in a straight line to hit your spells. So it is pretty easy to kill Zoe because it's pretty easy to hit all of her spells onto Zoe. Make sure you're not ulting in front of Lux. I mean, yeah, if you ult in front of Lux, she'll just full combo you and you'll die. Even if you have a little bit of MR, like you're gonna chunk pretty hard. But uh, yeah, this is the rune page I'd go, or the rune page before, Rushing Verdant Barrier and Mercury Treads. That's how I'd play into Lux. Now on to Malzahar. Okay, one second. Okay, now on to Mal's. Um, I do think Mal's will be somewhat popular. Into Malzahar, honestly, I just go Spellbook because you're going to go TP and you're just going to be farming with him all game. Um, we're going to be going Futures Market. We're going to be going Ingenious Hunter. I meant Insight. And we'll be going these rune pages, right? I meant. Actually, no, we'll do this. Uh, against Mal's. All you're doing is farming. Also, if you ult forwards against Malzahar, he's just going to ult you. It's pretty simple. Just don't stand near the minions when they die, because Malefic Visions can go to other people. And it's really hard to deal with that, like, spam wave thing. All he does is just shove, 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 shove. And also, Malzahar next season, his items are really buffed. So you do need to be careful, because he actually deals a lot of damage. Oh. Okay, yeah. He does actually deal a lot of damage, and you really, really, really need to be careful into Mal's. It's very scary. Um, make sure you prioritize going um, just full damage. You can go proto here with you can go proto. You honestly can go first strike here with proto belt to pop his shield, but I don't think it's that valuable. But yeah, that's how I do the Malzar matchup. Okay. Okay. On to who is next on the list. It is Morgana. Okay, so the only reason why I put Morgana on this list is because I think Morgana is going to be popular again next season due to the fact that you can build burn items like Malignants and uh, Leandries. So into Morg, honestly, you can just do a standard Zoe page. You could play Hedge into Morgana. You can do this page here. Um, you can... Also, go Spellbook into Morg, but if you want more like lane dominance, then I would just do this. If you ult into Morgana, um, she'll just look for a binding and then run up to you and kill you. Also, Morgana does soft counter you with the fact that her uh, black shield removes your sleep, so you have to be careful for that. Um, also, make sure you, if you, let's say you get hit by a snare, and if you rush Mercs and she tries ulting you, you can just ult out of her range of her R, so it breaks the chain. That's like a couple of key things I would do in this matchup. Other than that, just shove her out. Um, Morgana's early <clears throat> level one through five is really weak, but her her wave clear is stronger than yours when she gets points into Tormented Soil. So yeah. Now on to the next matchup that a lot of people have been asking me about because no one knows how to play that. And I'm gonna be honest, like I'm gonna be so honest with you. If you were in Champion Select right now listening to this and you were playing against Nefiri, dodge. You dodge. Nefiri is so hard to play against. It's really, really, really hard. Um, I would take these rune page right here. Obviously, go armor here. Um, 
you want to be rushing Zhonya's in this matchup. You want to be rushing armor. You want to be just trying to survive. Because once Nefiri, Nefiri will always block your bubble with uh, her dogs. So it's really, really, really hard to deal with. Um, early lane, you can look for hedges and outpoke her. But as soon as Nefiri hits level 3, she can look to all in you. And if Nefiri is smart, she'll rush Edge of Night and just completely shit on you. Like, it's almost unplayable. So in this matchup... Just look for early hedges. Don't look for bubbles. Only look for bubbles over walls. Um, you're never going to hit her with a bubble, to be honest. And if the enemy Nefiri gets hit by a bubble, she's griefing. She should shave her head and become Amish. So that's what I would do into Nefiri with these runes. Okay. Um, next is Nunu. Um, against Nunu, honestly, I would just go sc scaling runes. Honestly, I you could just go spellbook. Another reason why I put Nunu here is because I think tanks are going to be strong. And also, Nunu is a popular mid laner in high elo, so this is more of like a high elo thing. Um, if you are versus Nunu, you can go this rune page here, or you can just go scaling runes for free. You go Spellbook because you need to match uh, Nunu's roams later into the game. You have to go TP, you can't really kill him. You can go Ignite, but it's a waste of time. Um, you can also go Q play style Zoe into it, which is like this page here. And yet again, it's just pretty simple. You just want to get, oh, you just want to get um, either one shot Nunu or uh, outscale him. So make sure if you're versing Nunu, you take, you have to take an absolute focus and gathering storm to outscale him because he's going to be roaming really hard and you won't be able to match it. So you need to be able to match his gold lead by, he's going to be getting kills and stuff in other lanes while you're getting farm and experience. And also passive AP from Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm. Also, in the Nunu matchup, I'd actually are you taking Ghost Poro is better here than um, Eyeball Collection because you can't really kill Nunu <clears throat> unless he's really bad. Then you can kill him. So that's what I would do into the Nunu matchup. Okay, next is Nico. Um, this champion is super broken early game. Past 15 minutes, she's a spoon. So you just gotta wait. Like it's just a waiting game. Against Nico, you can go um, Absolute Focus, but it's not really worth because one Q, I'm pretty sure, just instantly removes Absolute Focus from you. So Transcendent Scorch is good here. Also, you really want to go Taste of Blood here and Ingenious Hunter. Um, into Nico, you can rush Mercs if you're scared of her all-in. Also, um, you just want to be cautious of the creeps. Make sure whenever you're reversing Nico, you spam press tab if she's missing so you can see where she is on the map. Always, always, always focus on where she is in the map <clears throat> because you can actually see her if she's missing, if she's uh, camouflaged. So, yeah. Um, make sure you don't ult, like, you save your ult to dodge her R. And also make sure if you ult forwards into Nico, she can just block your Q or your bubble. Let's say you put her, you manage to land a bubble on her and she uses her W. Make sure you always angle your bubbles like diagonally so it's way easier to hit them. Um, so it doesn't get blocked by uh, <laughs> her clone. Also, thank you for the sub. Sorry. I'm also streaming while I'm doing this, so yeah. Okay, now on to um, Oriana. Yes, now, fun, okay, right? let me turn these off. Okay, now on to Oriana. Um, Oriana, it's. It's still going to be really rough. Oriana is probably still going to be one of the best mids in the game. But um, Oriana's base damage is super high. You want to just go this rune page here. Honestly, you just do this. Oriana is always going to out damage you. She's going to out space you. Whenever you go in for a trade, she's going to look for a trade back. It's super, super, super hard to deal with. Um, in this matchup, you need to rush boots as fast as you can. Like, <clears throat> you should look for a cheetah recall into boots. Or you should look for, once you have 1100 gold, you just recall and buy full boots up front. Um, you also need to take, take into consideration looking for long range cues and then also looking to save your ultimate to dodge your shockwave. Those are like the main things in this matchup to do. And that's what I would do into Oriana. Okay, now who is next on the list? Um, Pantheon. <laughs> Thank you so much for the sub. Also, guys, don't sub and follow yet. I'm recording something. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Pantheon. Um, Pantheon... Hey, Sharp. Pantheon is one of these matchups where it's... 
either really easy or really, really, really hard. It just depends on how good the Pantheon player is. Um, oh, I put Pantheon. Oop, Pantheon. Yes, um, this will be fun, right? I need to turn this off. It's like triggering me. Where is this? Okay, <clears throat> Pantheon. It just depends on how good the Pantheon player is. Um, whether or not it's um, he starts W, if he starts Q. Also, Pantheon's Q range is really, 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 really high. If Pantheon rushes Mercs, <clears throat> this matchup is actually really tricky. Um, in this matchup, I would just do this page right here. A standard hedge page. Pretty simple. Um, you can go Protobell into him, but I don't think it's that good. But yeah, simple hedge page. Um, once Pantheon uses E, <clears throat> it automatically, you just wait for him, for the thing to expire, and then you land your Q. And it's a free guaranteed hit. So it's not that hard. Uh, Pantheon just becomes a problem once he gets like Edge of Night, or if he goes Mercs or Cleanse, it's actually extremely, extremely hard. And yeah, all you have to do is hedge him and play around his Q range, W range. So yeah. Okay, now on to <clears throat> Kiana. I'm gonna be real. Kiana is one of the easiest mashups for Zoe in the entire game. Like it is actually laughable how easy the Kiana matchup is. Like it's really easy. Kiana, in my opinion, right now is just not a good champion. Um, you literally can just either take barrier or um, barrier or ignite into Kiana, and then just sit on a Seeker's Arm Guard, she can never kill you. Like, she genuinely can never kill you. Um, also, you literally just always out-trade her. Like, you do short-range Q. I mean, you do <clears throat> hedges. Also, you can just spam shove her into tower. And since the lane is a lot bigger, Kiana actually can't look to all in you anymore with her ult because it's farther away from the river. It's actually really hard for Kiana to kill you now if you're sitting in the middle of mid because the lane is a lot bigger. So Kiana has gotten a lot weaker in that sense. But her team fight has gotten stronger because of Baron. But in lane phase, um, it's really, really, really easy to deal with Kiana. Um, all you have to do is just shove her under tower, force her into either roaming and missing CS or just force her into um, dealing with your shove under tower. And that's what I would do in Kiana. Okay. Next up is Rumble. Um, Rumble isn't that hard, but I'd argue um, into Rumble. Rumble is one of the only matchups in the game where you rush um, Boots of Swiftness because <clears throat> Rumble's E reduces your MR by literally 50%, and it's like actually impossible to deal with. So into Rumble, I'd probably do either the Hedron page that was like you could do this page here into Rumble, like just a standard hedge page, or you can do this page here into Rumble as well. Um, this page right here. Um, I think this is pretty like standard. You just need to, there's not really much in this matchup other than don't get hit by his Electro Harpoon, which is his E because it reduces your MR by 50% if you get hit by both. And that's why Swiftness Boots are super important because if Rumble hits you with one spell, you're, it's, you're perma CC'd and you die. That's why Swifties is super important. You can look to poke them out with Qs. You can also um, look to like keep the wave in a state where the jungler could probably get commit, but since the wave is really hard, since since it's hard to gank people now, so maybe it's not like that good, but yeah. Honestly, the, the biggest thing I can recommend is just rush Swift and Space into Rumble and you should be fine. It's not that big of a deal. Um, okay, now on to Rise. I actually think Rise is going to be picked a lot next season because of the new mana items. Um, Rise used to be one of Zoe's worst matchups because Rise would always build um, tenacity and he would also build a lot of HP. So in Rise, what we, what we will be doing for the new season is um, Airy, Mana Flow Band, um, Absolute Focus, Transcendence into presence of mind and cut down. The reason why we're doing this page again is because Rise, all the new items that Rise builds are HP items. Rise is just going to be stacking a fuck ton of HP and you're always getting value out of cut down. Plus you also have absolute focus on gathering storm to help you in dealing with Rise. Um, if, you're, if Rise even 
stacks a little bit of MR, immediately just start building Void Staff. Like, don't even hesitate to build it. Um, in this matchup, it depends on what their jungler is. If they have a spam ganking jungler with Rise, then go Cleanse. If they don't have a spam ganking jungler with Rise, then go um, Ignite, but go, uh, go Mercs. So you need to look into that. Uh, you always out-trade him early game, like level 1-2, as long as you can dodge his uh, second Q, um, and his uh, empowered Q. Also, don't stand next to the creeps because the thing spreads and like it can hit you, and it's really dangerous. So that's what I would do in tries. Okay, now on to Seraphine. Uh, the Sarah Zoe matchup is low key kind of Seraphine favored, in my opinion. Um, it's not Seraphine favored in the sense that she can, like, kill you. It's sen it's in the sense that she can just outscale you. Seraphine is just a strong champ when it comes to scaling, and Zoe's actually really bad into scaling champs. <clears throat> so, into Seraphine, you want to just build as much raw damage as possible and look to one shot her. Like I said before, in the other other matchups where there's scalers you want to be doing a build that has backline access that you can one shot the backline because that's the only way you're going to be viable so you want to do like as much damage as you can so like storm surge shadow flame robidon glitchbane you want to build as much pure damage as possible and also building a lot a couple other things too and it just depends on that um so Another thing into Seraphine is don't waste your ultimate. It, like you can, you can R forwards and look for a bubble, but it's not really that good unless you guarantee no, it's gonna kill her because she can just farm really safe from a range, and it's really obnoxious to deal with. And um, yeah, I think that's what I would do in Seraphine. Um, also, if you're reversing a Seraphine that has a brain and she has like a death ball comp, uh, good luck and uh, shave your head. And that's what I would do in Seraphine. Okay, next is the like this champ. Like I'm actually really scared. Then so the next champion is Singed, and I'm actually really fucking scared for season 14 Singed. Like this year Singed, I feel like Singed is going to be really, really, really popular, especially in high elo, and it's going to be extremely, extremely annoying to deal with. You can do two pages into Singed, which is this page right here. Um. Which is just a standard hedge page, but with absolute focus to try to poke him out his lane as much as you can. Or you can go the first strike page where you do this, you skip going boots, boom, boom. And then you go um, this right here. This is just to get gold into Singed, but honestly, like this, this champ mid next season is actually gonna be really hard. It's hard to gank him. He can roam easier. Um, He's just super tanky, so you just want to get as much money as possible and try to get as much gold as you can into Singed because you could never match him in a team fight setting. Unless you have backline access and you can kill their backline. So um, just look for mana flow ban proc. I meant for uh, first strike procs, but if you have area, look for mana flow ban procs to get as much mana flow ban as you can. In this matchup, you want to go be going like Caster's Companion, I meant Luden's Companion into um, Lich Bane and just standard hedge. Zoe build. That's what I would do. And singed. And just make sure you're respecting his roams and pinging your team. Okay. Now on to Swain. Um, so I think Swain... Uh, like, I feel like Swain is going to be really strong. But like at the same time, I don't think he's going to be really strong. But I think he will be because Malignance is really strong. So into Swain... I'm just going to do a standard hedge page, but with Presence of Mind and Cutdown. Um, if you're versus Swain, you always get value out of Cutdown, no matter what. He always will have higher HP than you, no matter what item you build. And now, since Shadow Flame and the other items don't actually give HP anymore, you actually gain a fuck ton of value out of Cutdown by going Shadow Flame and being able to crit him for true damage with your E. Also, against Swain, make sure you're saving your R to dodge his um, second cast of his ultimate. And also, make sure you're not just ulting forwards in lane. Because if you ult forwards in lane and you miss your bubble, he can just instantly E you from where you came from and pull you in, and then you're dead. As soon as Swain gets realized, it's super, 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 super hard to deal with this champ. Um, you're just going to have to build anti-tank items. Probably like Leandries, honestly. It's this matchup. I would probably build Leandries. It's just hard. Um, 
And yeah, that's what I do against Swain. Okay, next is Silas. Now, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm going to be so candid. Like, super real. If you play Silas, you're a fucking Gerber baby piece of shit. This champ has been overloaded for so fucking long. Like, he deals a billion fucking damage. He's obnoxious. He's annoying. Um, in Silas, you have to go bone plating. The reason why is because Silas will always, always, always try all inning you at level one or level one or three, depending on which spells he goes. And if you have um, bone plating into Silas, he can never kill you. And the Silas matchup is Zoe favored until Silas gets one item, and it's really, really, really obnoxious because he just doesn't really have um, he doesn't really have cooldowns as soon as he gets one item. So. It's really tricky to deal with. Um, other things is like you just need to focus on pressuring him as much as you can and keeping him mid. Also, in this matchup, Silas is going to ask his jungler to come mid. Make sure you ward early to see where the jungler is because Silas is a tandem mid laner, which means he likes 2v2ing with his jungler. So you have to be careful with that. And yeah, you just play with hedges and look to push him in. Okay, <clears throat> now on to the matchup of the century, the Syndra matchup. Okay, there's two pages. There's two pages for Syndra that I'm that I constantly do into Syndra. There's two. You can either do this page right here, which is electrocute. This is more if you're comfortable into Syndra, or or this is if you're comfortable into Syndra. This page right here into Syndra is fine. If you're not comfortable into Syndra, or like it's a really high ELO game, I think Spellbook will always be better into Syndra. Um, you do this page right here, and then, yep, this page right here. Um, and in this matchup, you want to be rushing Mercury Treads, and you either want to be going Cleanse or TP into Syndra if it's a high ELO game. If it's a low ELO game, you can't go Ignite, it's fine. But do not greed going Sorcerer Shoes into Syndra you will die. She will kill you and you will die. Like, do not, d don't greed going mercs. I mean, don't greed not going mercs into Syndra because as soon as she hits that stun, you're probably gonna die. And the mercs fuck up her combo super hard. So please, please, please be careful of that. Also, in this matchup, you have to rush boots. You have to rush boots. You need to be rushing Mercury Treads. Can't stress that enough. Rush Mercury Treads. Also, if the Syndra is smart, if you ult forwards, she'll immediately QE you and then W back to where your location is and then Q you and then ult you. So be careful of that. Um, in this matchup, you want to be looking to just clear waves and looking for long range Qs and maybe fish for bubbles. But don't be looking for hedges because she will always out trade you no matter what, if the Syndra is smart. <clears throat> okay. On to one of my favorite matchups to play Zoe, which is Talon. Um, into Talon, you want to be going um, this page right here. Uh, um, standard hedge page. Um, also, you want to be rushing in this matchup. You want to rush these three items into Talon: Luden's Companion, Lichbane, and <clears throat> um, Zanias. Those are the three items you want to be rushing. The reason why is because Ingenious Hunter makes Luden's Companion, Lich, and Zanias a super short cooldown, and Talon can never duel you like ever. Um, Talon does have one of the highest base armor MRs in the game, so be careful of that. Also, since they made mid lane a lot bigger, it's very hard to contain um, Talon, and it's hard to gank him. So just spamming your teammates when he goes Mia, but on 1v1s, you should be able to beat him. Look for short range Qs in lane, look for pressuring him under tower, but as soon as he gets like DMAT and he can one-shot the wave, and once he gets Profane Hydra, it's really annoying to deal with. But yeah, that's what I would do into Talon. On to another cancer. Damn, there's so many champs that are cancer. Ew. Okay. On to the next champ, which is Tristana. Um, Trist, you. I don't know how this matchup is going to go next season, to be honest. But um, into Trist, um, I would do this rune page here into Tristana. Um, because you want to be able to one-shot Trist later into the game with Electrocute, because you need to be able to kill her. And also you need to be able to survive lane phase, because Tristana is going to look to all-in you and jump on you. 
Um, Overgrowth does help a fuck ton into Trisana because it's a super, super scary map. It's a volatile matchup for sure. Um, into Trist, make sure you always save your bubble for when she's, like, right when she's about to land, that's when you cast your bubble. Not when she's jumping, it's too unreliable. Wait until she's right about to land and she can't move. It's a free bubble hit. Just save it for that. Um, also, if you ult forwards, she could just look to... If you ult forwards in Zoe and you miss your bubble, she could just jump onto you and kill you. Um, also, she's way better at split pushing than you. Super, super, super volatile matchup. Please be careful. Just be careful. And yeah, that's how I'd build into Trisana. And the, what I would... Uh, what runes it go? Okay. Now on to Trinomir. Um, since they removed Everfrost, Trinomir is actually kind of tricky now. Um, low key, I'd go Ignite Ghost in this matchup into Trend, and I would go <coughs> Phase Rush into Trinomir, in my opinion. Um, the reason why is because since the lane is a lot longer, it's actually scarier for you to verse Trend. If you walk up a little too far, he can just look to kill you. I mean, you can, instead of Phase Rush, you can just go Airy and go Ignite Ghost, but <clears throat> you really need the movement speed to, like, to run away from Trend. And also the Phase Rush proc makes it so that his uh, slow doesn't affect you. So into Trend, uh, just this page here, pretty simple. Just if Trindamir ever aggresses onto you, you immediately run the fuck out. Also make sure when you're poking Trindamir, you don't proc your Phase Rush. Because once Phase Rush is procced, it's on cooldown and he can kill you. So be really, really, really careful of that. Be very, very, very careful of that. Okay. Now on to uh, TF. Now, TF is actually going to be strong as fuck next season. I don't know if you guys have been seeing the new Onto Twisted Fate. I don't know if you guys have been seeing the new um, changes that they've been doing on the PBE. I mean, like with the new blue card TF. It looks very obnoxious play against so into tf i would actually go summon airy nullifying orb yeah nullifying orb transcendence scorch um send impact and then gather uh and ingenious hunt ingenious hunter with um the magic resist thing in this matchup you want to go ludens um ludens companion into banshee's veil tf is going to be a monster he will try one shotting you with the blue card tech if you have banshees he cannot do that um also if you're uncomfortable in this matchup you can rush mercs um i mean tf he's just strong because he can one shot you really so if you buy an mr item early he should be fine also make sure you don't stand next to the creeps for his red card if you uh ult forwards it's really scary um he can look to kill you with like a jungler. Also make sure you, when TF hit six, you immediately spamping your teammates. Yo, TF is six, TF is six. Careful, 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 careful. And yeah, just look for short range cues, look for hedges. And then once he gets a uh, storm surge, you pray to Cthulhu that you won't get one shot. Lol. Okay. On to uh, Vigar. So I low key think this champ is going to be horrible next season. Like, I don't even want to like go that like uh, that much into Vigar. I think he's really bad. Um, into Vigar, you want to go Q playstyle. You just want to look to one shot him. You can't really kill him in lane unless he's really bad. Um, I don't think the new items are very good with him. I mean, sure, you're already overkilling. You're already overkilling people on live server with Vigar. So the new AP items, you're or like it's just overkill. <clears throat> So I definitely think um, just doing a standard Q, you can go Proto as well into this matchup. Just look for one-shotting him. Don't look to fight him early. Don't next, don't sit next to creeps that are low. He'll look to Q and he'll look to get a stack off you and the creep. Also later into the game, if you just play around walls, then Vigar can never kill you. If you walk up to Vigar and you ult, then he can um, event horizon where your ult was. And then you press W. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a little, a little spooky, a little scary with that. But other than that, the Vagar matchup is pretty easy. Okay. 
Now on to Velkaz. Um, I don't think Velkaz... Actually, I don't know. I actually think Velkaz will be pretty good. I don't think he'll be popular mid lane, but if you play against him, he's going to deal a fucking damage because of Shadow Flame. Because Shadow Flame makes it so you can crit. So, into Velkaz, I would do Ignite and Ghost. And I would do this page here. You could substitute this out for Transcend... I mean, Celerity, but um, I do this page here. And into Velkaz, um, the items that I will be rushing are Luden's Companion. Um, yeah, wait. Luden's, Lich Bane, and Cosmic Drive for movement speed to try to dodge him. Um, if you're more comfortable without Transcendence, you can just go Celerity for the bonus movement speed. Also, if you're reversing Velkaz, do not ult forwards. You will die. I have played against his apps too many times to realize that as a Velkaz player is really good. You ult forwards, he throws his entire combo at you, and you just die. Velkaz is like one of the highest damages in the game, like for a champ. So be very, very, very careful about his all-in. Super scary. Um, you can look for short. Honestly, I wouldn't even go Scorch in this matchup. I think you should go Gathering Storm. Um, if you look for short-range Qs, he, if he's smart, then it's he'll always outtrade you because he'll always be landing his Qs. Um, you can go Electrocute into him, but I definitely think going Ignite Ghost into uh, Velkaz is the move. And yeah, that's what I would do into the Velkaz matchup. Okay, now on to the next one, which is... Okay. Next one is Vex. Now, this matchup actually used to be really tricky because you needed to go Banshee's Veil. But since you can just sit on Verdant Barrier, I'm not even kidding you. This matchup is Gerber baby easy now. It is so free. It is so free. It's insane. Into Vex, since you have a Genius Hunter, you rush Verdant Barrier, she can never ult and kill you. She can't play the game. It's a free Banshees. It's a 1600 gold Banshees. She can't kill you. She can never ult. She can never open with ult on you. Ever. <clears throat> free as fuck matchup now. Super easy. As soon as you get Vernant, she can't kill you. Um, in lane, she does bully you pretty hard. Um, in this matchup, I would rush Boots after Vernant. Or you can just sit on Boots uh, 1 into Vex, but buying boots early into Vex is really good because her spells are dodgeable if you have movement speed. <clears throat> so look out for that. Also, later into the game, let's say your Verdant Barrier, I mean, let's say your Banshee's Veil is down um, and you ult forward into Vex, she can just throw all of her, it's the same thing for Velkaz, she can just throw all of her stuff at you and you can just die. That's with a lot of these matchups, though. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Just rush Verdant Barrier and. That's it. It's fucking piss easy now. <laughs> okay. Now on to Victor. Okay. Now, I haven't versed that many Victors. Only like JS Method and a couple other Victors. But um, into Victor, you always, always want to go these two runes into Victor no matter what you're playing. Actually, no. These three runes into Victor are what we're doing. Victor is a champ that he's designed to win mid lane, and he's designed to ant like to nullify your laning phase and make it so you can't kill him. So we'll be going Ghost Poro. Um. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is right. We'll be going Ghost Poro with um Taste of Blood and Scorch. We want to be scaling with Ghost Poro, and we want to have a little bit of lane agency with Scorch, and also Taste of Blood is super good into Victor because of his um his thing. It's really 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 good into um his trading patterns because if victor is also smart he'll also go scorch and taste of blood and if you don't have scorch and taste of blood he'll always out trade you no matter what um victor does outscale you but super later into the game if you're versing a good victor and you ult forwards he'll gravity field where you ulted before and it's a little bit tricky but honestly if you just play it right and just play waves right and sack like sack a couple waves because Victor's early game is pretty oppressive, um, then it is pretty pretty easy to deal with. Also, make sure you're getting full value out of your Ghost Poro and don't sell your Trinket. Make sure as soon as the game starts, you walk straight down mid, put a Trinket, I mean, put a Ward in the middle of the lane so you automatically start lane with a little bit more, a little extra oomph because you do get AP from Ghost Poro. So yeah, that's how I do it to Victor. Okay, now, 
I'm gonna be for real. This next champ... This next champ is fucking spooky. Vladimir. Vladimir next season is going to be extremely, extremely strong. Because the new AP items, if you don't have AP, if you don't have mana, it's actually really, really, really good for um, any AP user that doesn't have any mana. And Vladimir stacks HP, so it's actually really good for Vlad. Um, into Vladimir, we're going cut down. We're going cut down, we're rushing Leandries, and we're getting as much bang for our buck into Vlad as much as possible. You can go Storm Surge into Vlad if you want to try one-shotting him, but he'll, I'm not even kidding you, I played against Vladimir that had 4,000 HP, you're not killing that fucker. So, you're not killing him, okay? So, we're playing for Leandries poke, and we're playing for scaling, because we have absolute focus and gathering storm. Um... You only want to be playing through out vision. You don't want... I mean, early game, you can look for an all-in, like, sure. But later into the game, if you ult towards a Vladimir, he will touch your inner thigh so inappropriately and call you his little bitch and call you names. It's terrifying to verse a Vlad later into the game. It's actually really scary. So please, please, please respect Vladimir <clears throat> later into the game. If you ult forwards early game and his pool is down, go for it. If you ult forwards and his pool is up and you miss your bubble, you're gonna die. Like, it's not even, it's not even, it's not even close, okay? It's a horrible, horrible matchup. Well, now, it's a horrible matchup outside of lane phase, but lane phase is pretty easy. Okay, now on to Zareth. Okay. Zareth Mm, like, Zareth, Zareth isn't necessarily hard in the sense that he's, like, really strong, but his lane phase is super obnoxious. It's super, super, super obnoxious. Into Zareth, <clears throat> I'm honestly probably, be, blah, 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 blah. into Zareth, I'm probably going to Celerity, and I'm rushing boots on Zoe. Um, just to dodge his spells. I would be also going Ghost Poro and Sudden Impact. You're not killing this fucker, like, ever. So, we're putting, we're stacking with Ghost Poros and we're trying to scale as much as we can. Zareth does outscale you, but um, using Ghost Poro to get a little bit of oomph in lane is really, really, really good. You can go, um, like, the Q one shot. I mean, you can go uh, Q playstyle into Zareth. That's only if you're really comfortable. But if it's a higher ELO game, I would not recommend going um, Q playstyle. This is way more. Way, 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 way more um, beneficial in the Zareth matchup. Just rush boots. And also, when Zareth is ulting you, make sure you run in a... You look like you're running a straight line, and your mouse is going like this. Like, you're strafing back and forth. Like, you're clicking diagonally forwards like this. And then as soon as you see the ult shot, you immediately swap back. And he'll, like, try... He overshoots it. Every Zareth player that's confident will shoot all of his things as fast as he can. So try to make sure that your mouse clicks are really fast to dodge his ult. So yeah, that's what I do in Seraph. Okay, now on to um, Yasuo. Um, the Yasuo matchup pretty much has not changed. His items are pretty much all the same. Um, into Yasuo, we just want to be going the standard hedge page. It's the same thing as what it was before. You want to be going Lich Bane. You want to be going Lunatic Pan, Lich Bane into um storm surge or some shit like that um you just want to be playing around his wind wall and in lane make sure make sure when you're playing against gaspo you're like hmm do you start q or e if he starts e you instantly lose the matchup if you're not like aware of it but if he starts q it's winnable also when you're playing against gaspo make sure you're always trying to auto him before you trade to proc his um his shield and also most yasuos go um <clears throat> the what's it called item? I meant the what's it called rune? Um, bone plating. So be careful of that. Um, another thing into Yasuo is when Yasuo win walls, make sure you angle your your Q to the side so it can actually go around the win wall. It's super, super, super easy to do. And most Yasuos always win wall in front of them instead of diagonally. So 
If they're smart, they'll do a diagonal, and if they're not, they'll always do it straightforward, and you can always look for a bubble. Also, your passive autos go through his win wall. That is a big thing to note in this matchup. And also, let's say you know you're about to get hit by a tornado and you can't dodge it. Let's say you get hit, you get hit by a knockup. You press R. He'll and you press R. He'll go to where he'll alt where you ulted to, and then you'll snap back and he'll stay over there. So that's a really good tip in this matchup. Really, really good tip. Okay. Oh, that was Yasuo. Oops. Anyways, that I that was Yasuo. Oh. Also, take armor into Yasuo. Sorry. Take armor into Yasuo. There we go. Okay. On to the next one. Yone. Um, it's the exact same thing as the Yasuo matchup, except um, this champion is homophobic, racist, and um, looks like he would call me a slur in high school. Um, this champion is super obnoxious to deal with. Since Everfrost is removed, it's actually really, really, really hard to deal with this character. It's really, really, really hard to deal with Yasuo. I mean, with um, Yone. He'll just <clears throat> keep you... Like, his training patterns are just super toxic. And once... Um, since bubble play style is removed, this matchup actually has gotten a lot trickier. Um, honestly, I'd probably just rush, like, Ludens into Zhonya's or Ludens into Seeker's Arm Guard and then Lich Bane. Like, you can't really stop him coming into you anymore because they removed Everfrost. And Everfrost was a really key point in this matchup. And also rushing CDR boots rushing CDR boots was really key in this matchup too. But since they nerfed CDR boots, it is not worth going anymore. So um you just need to watch out for his E. Also he can break your sleep with his E. Let's say you're playing against Yone. When he ults, you want to ult over his R and then bubble to where his clone is. So once he snaps back, then he goes to sleep. That's like the main, main, main thing to do in this matchup, in my opinion. And just look for hedges. Don't really try to look for anything. And yeah. Okay. Now on to <clears throat> one of <clears throat> one of my favorite matchups to play, which is Zed, because it's just a pure skill matchup until Zed got items. But guys, guys, when I tell you, when I tell you, Zedithin next season is horrible! Zed can't build CDR anymore. Zed can't build Ravenous Hydra. He has to build Profane Hydra, which does not apply in his spells. So it is so much easier versing Zed now. It is so much easier. And also, we can just buy Seeker's Arm Guard. And it's fucking Zhonya's. And it gives armor. It's literally, it's literally two items in one. It's fucking free as fuck. <clears throat> also into Zed, whenever Zed ults you, always bubble behind you. He'll always show up behind you. No matter what he happens, he'll always show up behind you, the direction of where he ulted. So if he ults in front of you, he'll go behind you. So, yeah. Also in this matchup, look for short range cues, look for hedges. Um, you can look to alt forwards, laugh, spam laugh, and it looks like you're casting your bubble, and then he'll ult you. And then once he ults you, you bubble behind you and you kill him. And then you're like, period, you fucking kill, kick his ass. <laughs> um, in this matchup, obviously, same thing as the Talon one. We want to be going um, Luden's Companion, um, Lich Bane, and Zhonya's. Or you can do Luden's Companion, Zhonya's, Lich Bane. So yeah, that's what I do instead. Next up on the list is Ziggs. So Ziggs is another matchup. It's like the Heimer matchup where you can never kill him. Like literally ever, unless he's like horrible. So all you want to do is just scale. Into the Ziggs matchup, you want to go teleport and do these runes right here. Oh. Into the Ziggs matchup, you want to just do these runes right here. You want to be going one-shot Zoe. You want to be building as much damage as you can to one-shot Ziggs. Because you can't match his wave clear. So the only way you can do it is you like deal with him in lane phase for a bit. And then once you get your first item, you just look to one-shot him over and over and over again. <clears throat> you can sit on last chapter here and then just go straight into like Shadow Flame, Proto Belt, um, Storm Surge, all these crazy items. Just look to build as much AP as you can and one-shot them. Also, if you're versing Ziggs, if you alt-forwards, yet again, he can just throw all of his fucking combo at you. Also, if you alt-forwards into a Satchel Charge, you can't cast Bubble because it interrupts it. So make sure you're wary of that. Also, 
Only look for long range cues in this lane. He will outrange you if you look for hedges. You cannot hit him with hedges. Only look for long range cues. So yeah. Also, yeah, I think that's pretty much it into the Ziggs matchup. Okay. Now on to um I think actually I think that's it. Yeah. We're done. Okay. That's all the matchups we have. That's that's every matchup for mid in 2024, season 14. Um I want to thank you everyone for watching the guide. Also, I really hope this guide helps you. Um, also, I do offer coaching. You can join my Discord. Look for that. And also, I do stream every single day. Um, I do have a stream schedule now. I stream at 10 a.m. EST every single day. On weekends, I mean, on weekdays, it's a minimum of six hours. And then on the weekends, it's like either three to four hours. So, yeah, I want to thank everyone for watching today's video. And I really hope that I can help you in season 14 for your ranked climb on Zoe. And I really appreciate you guys watching me. Okay. Bye.